Top 10 Disturbing Child Experiments From underage electroshock therapy to teaching kids the wonders of violence, we count 10 disturbing experiments that children were subjected to. Number 10 and Broken Toy Experiment This experiment was devised by psychologists at the University of Iowa. Their aim was to better understand how young children experience guilt, because apparently that's an important venture worth sinking money into. In the experiment, an adult gave a toy to a child, explaining that it was very special and warning them to take care. As you've no doubt guessed, the rigged toy shattered into a hundred million pieces, give or take, when the kid laid their grubby paws on it. Then, following the script, the adult said, Oh my and stared silently at the child for 60 excruciating seconds. Each kid was overcome with shame. They squirmed, looked away, hunched their shoulders, covered their faces and cried. The experiment demonstrated the concept of time dilation, where time seems to pass more slowly because the observer is acutely observing it. It also equipped the children with the shame they'll need to survive adulthood. Number 9 and dash experimental spinal taps on children. Lumbar punctures, often referred to as spinal taps, are often necessary procedures for treating neurological and spinal disorders. They involved sticking a giant needle into the patient's spine and were once believed to be painless. In 1896, pediatrician Arthur Wentworth decided to test this belief by performing unnecessary spinal taps on 29 young children. Each patient winced in pain during the procedure but Wentworth kept needing more proof. He eventually concluded that, yes, lumbar punctures were painful. Who knew, right? His colleagues criticized the experiment, with one claiming it was human vivisection. The children's parents had no idea the experiment was taking place. When news of the experiment hit the public, Wentworth endured huge backlash and was forced to give up his Harvard Medical School teaching position. Number 8 and Dash Little Albert Experiment This famous experiment was conducted by behaviorist John B. Watson and graduate student Rosalie Rayner, and involved conditioning an 11-month-old infant, Albert, to fear several safe stimuli for some reason. First, the researchers observed Albert reactions to a rat, rabbit, monkey, some masks, Santa Claus and some burning newspapers. When he showed no signs of fear, Watson began coupling the unveilings with loud noises caused by banging a hammer and metal pipe together. Naturally, this caused the child to explode into a fit of snot, tears and general hysteria. The cruel and abrasive experiment was repeated so many times that Albert began to associate the sight of these objects with discomfort and cried immediately upon seeing them. Unfortunately little Albert passed away at age 6 from a condition called hydrocephalus, so the long-term effects of the experiment are a mystery. Number 7 and Dash Shock Therapy and LSD Experiment in the 1960s, Dr. Loretta Bender of New York's Creedmoor Hospital began conducting electroshock therapy on kids with social issues. Somehow, she thought this barbaric practice would be revolutionary. Her methods involved interviewing sensitive children in front of a large group, then applying light pressure to the child's head. Any child who reacted to the pressure was thought to exhibit early signs of schizophrenia and scheduled for electroshock therapy. Foolproof Bender was apparently cruel and unsympathetic to the kids in her care and administered shock treatment to over a hundred children, the youngest of whom was just three years old. Bender deemed the treatment successful because only a few children went into relapse. 
She also gave the children weekly adult-sized doses of LSD and the hallucinogen psilocybin, probably from her own personal stash. Number 6 and dash hepatitis in mentally ill children. In the 1950s, Willowbrook State School, a state-run institute for mentally handicapped children, reported outbreaks of hepatitis. Because of unsanitary conditions, it was considered inevitable that these children would contract the disease, so Dr. Saul Krugman came to investigate the outbreak. Hoping for a vaccine, he devised a controversial experiment that involved deliberately infecting the children with the disease. Amazingly, each of the children's parents agreed to this, and parents who were on this school's waiting list sent in permission letters confirming they would be okay with a deliberate infection. Apparently offering your child to science was the only way to secure a spot at this overcrowded facility. It's like the Harvard of mental institutions. Number 5 N Bobo the Clown in the 60s. Psychologist Albert Bandura devised an experiment to see if children would imitate aggressive behavior without encouragement. He shot a video of an adult punching, kicking and beating an inflatable Bobo the Clown doll with hammers, because when it comes to clown maiming there's no such thing as overkill, then showed it to a group of young children. Another group was shown a non-violent video while a third was shown no video at all. Each group was unleashed one at a time into a room with a bobo doll and an assortment of weapons. Without prompting, the first group went to town on bobo, beating the figurative stuffing out of him. One child even whispered creepy sweet nothings to it at gunpoint. The kids who hadn't seen the violent video were far less aggressive. Bandura then replicated the experiment with new children and a video featuring the assault of a real-life clown. Sure enough, the impressionable youngsters physically assaulted the real clown when released into the room. They even came at him with a hammer, proving this was genuine aggression, not play fighting. If I were that clown it'd be speaking to my union. Number 4 N Dash The Visual Cliff in 1960, two psychologists at Cornell University built what they dubbed the visual cliff, a contraption made up of boards laid across a heavy sheet of glass. Patterned fabric was added, so the transition from boards to bare glass ended up looking like a sheer drop straight to the floor below. The experiment involved placing 36 babies above the illusion of a sheer drop and asking their mothers to coax them to crawl over the cliff. Why could it be, babies? Obedience or self-preservation? Only three of the 36 crept onto the glass. Most crawled away from their own mothers, no doubt instilling lifelong trust issues. The experimenters did, however, Notice that several of the infants who didn't cross onto the glass still ended up close enough to the edge to fall if the drop been real. This led to the brilliant conclusion that babies should not be left unattended at cliff edges. Amazing. Number 3 and dash the monster study. The monster study was a 1939 experiment on 22 orphan kids in Iowa. It was conducted by Wendell Johnson and his graduate student, Mary Tudor. The orphan children were placed in control groups and half were given positive speech therapy, with the fluency of their speech being praised. The other half received negative speech therapy, and was belittled for every speech imperfection and told that they were stutterers. Normal speaking children in the second group were psychologically damaged and developed serious speech problems which they retained for the rest of their lives. Johnson's peers dubbed the unethical experiment the monster study and Johnson never published his results, fearing his reputation would be tarnished in the wake of human experiments conducted by the Nazis during World War II. 
The University of Iowa apologized for the experiment in 2001. Number 2 and David Reimer experiment. In 1965, infants David Reimer and his identical twin were taken for a routine circumcision. However, instead of a scalpel, the doctor performing the procedure used an electrocautery needle, burning off David's whole penis. David's parents sought the advice of psychologist John Money, who recommended getting David a sex change and raising him as a girl. David's parents complied, thinking it would give David the best quality of life, but Dr. Money's only aim was to capitalize on the situation and perform a nurture versus nature gender identity experiment. I just don't know what to believe if you can't trust someone with the last name money. Unsurprisingly, David, as Brenda, never accepted this new identity. He despised wearing dresses, preferred traditionally male toys, and was teased at school for being different. Dr. Money dismissively told parents that David was just going through a phase. He was probably counting his money at the time and not even paying attention. The Money Doctor later published papers about the experiment, calling it a success. However, decades later, a follow-up on the experiments emerged, illustrating the catastrophic damage that had been done to David. Tragically, David saw no way out of the whole confusing mess and committed suicide. Number 1 and Dash Robbers Cave Experiment It was the summer of 54. Social psychologist Muzaffar Sharif had just read Lord of the Flies and had a burning question what would happen if you stuck two groups of kids in the wild and encouraged them to hate each other. Enter the Robbers Cave Experiment, which saw 11 11-year-old boys headed to summer camp. They had no idea their parents had signed them up for the experiment, or that a secret second group of campers were on site that they'd be subtly conditioned to hate. The groups kept to themselves for the first week, establishing hierarchies and relationships. When they discovered each other, the experimenters instigated conflict by holding a Hunger Games-style tournament with challenges, promising trophies and pocket knives to the winners. Because knives are appropriate prizes for fear all kids will become detached from reality. With some encouragement, the team's innocent rivalry became a full-on blood feud. There was swearing, stealing and constant fist fights. In no time, this group of well-adjusted boys became aggressive savages. This was the third time Sharif had run the experiment. Each attempt ended in violence. In one instance, the boys even turned on Sharif himself.